Coming up on Valley News Live at 6, neighbors react to a man being arrested for murder right outside their front doors. Plus, a Barnesville parent speaks out after the act of shooting threat yesterday. And after witnessing a death that sparked nationwide protests, one Minnesota girl is writing a book to try to help others turn trauma into positivity. Valley News Live at 6 starts right now. This is Valley News Live at 6. We begin with a story that's new tonight at 6. A relatively quiet neighborhood full of commotion this morning as a man was arrested in connection to a murder dating back to August of 2020. Now, authorities say two years of tips, leads, and countless hours of investigative work led to this arrest. Valley News Team's Aaron Walling brings us the story. A chapter was added to the murder investigation of Santino Montreal. Another suspect has been arrested in connection to his death. 29-year-old Jesse Burnett was arrested Friday morning in the 1900 block of 53rd Avenue South by Fargo PD and the Red River Valley SWAT team, which surprised residents who say the area is normally peaceful. It makes me nervous that this could happen here and that people around this area could do that kind of thing. I guess I just kind of always thought that this is a safe neighborhood and a safe city, so it kind of is unnerving. Burnett was arrested in connection to the drive-by shooting of 41-year-old Santino Marial, who was killed in the garage of his apartment complex on the west side of Fargo. Burnett has been charged with intentional murder, among other things. He joins Joshua Brooks in jail as both were arrested in connection to Marial's murder. While McKay had no idea this man was in her neighborhood, she's glad to see that he's off the streets. I'm happy that he's been apprehended and not in this area anymore because, you know, you don't realize that people like that maybe live around here, which is scary. In Fargo, Aaron Walling, Valley News Live. And for Largo, Fargo police also say that more information will be provided at a later date. Just like the forecast said, the area got around one to three inches of snowfall. It may not have stuck around, but what now? Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson is here to tell you what the weekend will bring. Hutch? Uh, judging by uh, the coats people were wearing outside or even inside today, it's parka weather out there. Check these uh, pumpkins out there. Thanks so much to all of you for sharing photos of the scenery and how it's changed. Uh, well, we're trying to get through fall here, but winter's trying to give us a little bit of an early peak. Speaking of which, there is that three inch measurement. This one in Beltrami County in the Nebish area. Ryan, thanks for your photo. Here's a few other measurements. Roseau County with some uh, three inch reports there. Zirkle in Clearwater County, a couple of inches. Carlstadt, an uh, inch of snow, mostly falling in northwest portions of Minnesota. Setting sun behind the Fargo water tower there as viewed from our Luther family. Forward view the Clouds starting to become a, a little less widespread. A narrow band here in the Red River Valley, fewer showers from them. And some of these showers are actually rain because we have low 40s for many of us up north. 41 Grand Forks, 46 in Jamestown and mid and upper 30s in central Minnesota, the cool spot. So take that parka with you to the football game tonight. It'll be a little breezy, but those winds too will quiet down. Our chance of snow or rain this evening quiets down, but overnight more snow and that's how we'll kick off your weekend. A chance of snow again. I'll have hour by hour details on that. You guys coming up here in just a few minutes. All right. Thanks, Hutch. Yeah. There were several fake threats of school violence made all over the state yesterday, Minnesota and North Dakota. In North Dakota, it spanned from Grand Forks to Fargo to Jamestown. But the threat in Barnesville, Minnesota was real. Police say a high school student was taken into custody for sending an email threatening students and staff, giving a specific time during the school day in which the violence would happen. But police decided the student had no means to carry out the threat, so they released him back to his parents. Some staff members at the school, the high school today, who wish to remain anonymous, told us that they're concerned about some security flaws in the building, adding their school superintendent was attending a meeting in Fergus Falls while the school was in lockdown. Did it ever cross your mind to leave the meeting while the school was under lockdown? No, uh, knowing that um, stay in constant communication with the police chief and the uh, high school principal, uh, there weren't active, there wasn't an active shooting happening at the time. Ellers Bush flew out last night for a trip to Nashville. He tells us, tells us that he's going to follow up on the security concerns with the high school principal. Now, some Barnesville parents and teachers are calling for change tonight. They say yesterday's threat toward the school was an eye opener. Valley News team's Courtney Lockie joins us live in the studio with some of their concerns. Courtney. 
Mike, Stacy, parents tell me it was a little nerve wracking sending their kids back to school today. They are asking for two things moving forward, better preparation and more communication. Parents say the threat came in around noon, but it wasn't until the end of the day, about two hours later that they were notified. Now, many are worried about this student returning to campus, but they say the problem goes beyond one high schooler making a threat. They want school leaders to take a deeper look at what is causing this behavior so that kids can get the help they need before the worst happens. The elementary school is right next door and a parent tells me there was no lockdown there. With everything that's going on in the world, he says this was beyond frustrating. I'm wishing there was more transparency. Again, I understand that the police have their, their process they have to go through and we're very soon after the incident. Um, but the more information that they're able to get out to the public, I think it's going to be beneficial for everyone involved. And parents aren't the only ones who think could, things could have been handled better. A high school teacher says there was no communication and that staff isn't properly trained on how to handle these situations. They are hoping that this is a learning lesson in case the worst ever happened. We'll hear more from them and the superintendent tonight on Valley News Live at 9 and 10. All right, Courtney Lockie reporting live in the studio. Thanks. As we told you yesterday, numerous school districts all across the area were impacted by swatting these fake active shooter calls. Fargo Davies was one of those targeted. According to Fargo PD, there were signs that it could be a hoax, but they still took the call seriously and investigated. FPD spoke to us on what happens next. We recognize it's not always only about physical safety, but emotional safety as well. And so we're going to follow those pieces up as well on a day-to-day -day basis so that again our parents feel comfortable sending their kids to school and the kids feel safe being there. FPD says they will continue to investigate. Out West, police are releasing more information on the man arrested in Williston, North Dakota for having explosives in his apartment. Nearly 15,000 pounds of homemade explosives were found in 28-year-old Ross Petrie's garage. About 900 pounds have been destroyed. He is facing several charges uh, with regard to the apartment uh, and incident and that's still considered unsafe for people in the neighborhood. There's no word on when they can come back. In much happier news, this is a big weekend at NDSU. Tomorrow, the football team is hosting SDSU at the Fargo Dome. Today, they mark the opening of the new Nodak Insurance Company football performance complex. Besides football players, women's soccer, baseball, softball, and men's and women's golf programs will be putting this facility to use. This first phase of the facility includes an indoor and outdoor practice fields. I mean, definitely don't want to be out there in that negative degrees. I mean, he talked about some of the experiences we had. Coach Ennis talked about some of the experiences we had. And even being out here on like this field out here, like during the winter, have some of my, my worst memories, so uh, definitely <laughs> excited to, to have this opportunity to be in somewhere less cold. And the second phase of the $50 million project is underway. It's going to include a weight room, equipment room, sports medicine facilities, locker room, and team meeting room. Exciting stuff there. Later here on Valley News Live at 6, one young girl is working to help others by turning her traumatic experience into a positive one. Seems like we quickly fell into some winter-like conditions. Our time lapse here from South Fargo, whoa, well, it didn't last too long, that's one thing. And you know, well, when we're talking about winter weather, it can try to get an early start, but it's still having a tough time covering up all those beautiful fall colors. Your forecast has a little more flakiness off details. Next. This is Valley News Live.